classical music is very different from jazz. They have very different objectives. The first thing about jazz is that it, it teaches you how to project your personality and, and discover good positive and negative things about yourself, and it prizes individuality. But then it also puts responsibility on you to figure out how to put your individuality in the context of a group. <laughs> of the music is the drums and the bass. That's the heart of the music. The heart and soul of the music is the drums and bass. And really, they improvise almost all the time. And uh, classical musicians, don't they, don't they don't have a thing like a rhythm section. So imagine the bass as a car engine. You know, it can go faster depending on how you press the accelerator. The drums are like the wheels of a car. And they're always turning as far as the car is moving. But the engine and the, and the wheels they work together because the engine is turning the wheels. So there's, that's the marriage right there. One, two, three, four. You just try to keep your ears open and your mind open and try to... Swing, that's what we call it, swing. It just means you coordinate it, that, that you keep your equilibrium, no matter what happens. Like the blues, too. If something tragic happens, you take, absorb that pain and you shake it off, you know? You just try to continue in style. And that's, that's what swinging is like if you're dancing. You, you see a, a, you know, you see this figure skating, and they, they're figure skating the music, and some people really get right into the center of the music. You say, yeah, no, they they really in the center of the music, in the rhythm, just right in the pulse. And that's what that's what the swing is. You have all these people together and it's like a pulse. And you just get this pulse going and you play inside of the pulse and you and you just always addressing the pulse. It's like... <laughs> swing I guess it's it's happiness it's joy it's it's, uh, it's optimism I like to leave a lot of room in my music for people to improvise because jazz music, you have to have improvisation. Um, I like it. And in a lot of little ways, I try to get the musicians with the, with the imagination and with the individual personality like they really can play like Wycliffe Gordon, not from bonus, nobody plays like him, or Robert Stewart, and James Carter. Sometimes you get guys like that and it's, it's very hard to maintain the discipline because they just not nine to fivers, you know, they go, you got to be with them. To, you have to, like a lot of times, rehearsal is like pandemonium. You know, just people talking. And, but actually, I like that type of environment because I, I don't want it to be like a symphony rehearsal. <laughs> I want to 
gonna do? Cause I, I'm, I'm gonna cut this next section out, cause it, it is too slow. I know it is. When we get to that part, I want everybody to make some pandemonium. You had no love for the two bars in there, the D. Which one? At D for us to come in on the baseline that you can give I'm, I'm just, uh, y'all just watch me. If, you, if we need the extra, we need the extra measures, probably. Y'all set it up for four measures, okay? <laughs> let's let's try to really get, let's get on a vibe and try to really play it, cause I want to hear just what it's gonna sound like. I want y'all to, homie, I want you to, to, to bubble up underneath Vic when he's when he's playing his little piss pensive moments. All right. Where he, <laughs> where he's trying to make this decision. I want you to, to, you know, to rumble. I mean, not too much, just a little bit. And Vic Veal, the more abstract you play underneath him, the better, bro. All right. I mean, just build it up slowly. At first, it's just like, you know, deal with that pain. <laughs> and then as you get into it, you know, the more, I get another whole time. Boom, doom, 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 boom. So we can get a feel of the organic form. It's, it's, it's blue. So, you know, when we get to that flat six chord, Eric, fill that in too. He looks for personality, you know, and he likes for the musicians to get along, you know. That's the basic thing, you know. So, in other words, nice guys <laughs> that can play. musicians basically of the same caliber, no one who's trying to put on airs. Musicians who don't mind uh, growling, don't mind screaming through the instrument, or trying to imitate the sound of a chicken. You know, real, real, very raw and very, things you take for granted you see every day. Look at him, homie. Look at him, put it on him. Look at him, homie. is composing, he always leaves room, even though the majority of it, almost 80% of it is written out, 80-90% of it written out, it always has that room to, uh, to blossom. It's like putting water on some seeds and the flowers become, you know, the seeds turn to flowers or it could become a garden. Sometimes I would write things that sound like a Bach chorale, but I would put blues, harmonies, and juxtapositions in it. And I, mean, I try to deal with just a, a lot of a confluence of things. But there's a lot of freedom inside of what we do, and but there's still, the discipline is always there. So it makes for a real serious kind of work relationship, but still fun, it's still fun. Like a lot of times, we improvisation in jazz is confused with chaos. Like chaos is what you would have without the, the Declaration of Independence and the Constitution and the Bill of Rights, and your body of law. You, then you have chaos, everybody just does what they want. Sometimes you can't do what you want to do. You have to temper it and try to make it work with somebody else and really listen to other people and try to find what they're doing.
about a city. And it's about the, uh, the beat of a city, the, the, the pulse of a city. You know, it has, uh, it has th themes in it that deals with skyscrapers. It has themes in it that deals with uh, traffic, you know, the stop and go of traffic. It's just his musical depiction of a city, of city, of, of a city life. <laughs> Every people's music it, it contains something of the spirit and the nature of the people. And the grooves of the music are a symbol of the vitality of the people and life. The first movement of City Movement is like a collage, so I was trying to cut from thing to thing. Like if you walk through a city, one block is this, and the next block is that, and the next block is that, kind of like the art of Romare Beard or Matisse. Just things that cut back and forth, or some Picasso, some Cubist things with real sharp angles that just cut, 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 cut. different people, different uh, nationalities and different, I mean, different types of people crammed into one little space. And also all the angles and shapes of the city and different sections of it, one bleeds into another. And uh, just, it's a romantic city too, you know? It's a lot of crime here and homeless people struggling. There's a lot of struggle and strife, but there's also a lot of romance in the city. Not as much as New Orleans where I'm from, but it's a lot. There's a lot of romance here. The music is rooted in the blues. I think that's what he's what he's speaking of—a bluesy kind of feeling, you know. And just that the sound of the blues and the feeling of the blues. I think that's we. I, th I think that's what he's talking about when he speaks of down home, a down home feeling, a down home style. You know, a musician can't stop, can't stay still. We're always humming something. So most of us would get together, just to, you know, pass the time away and start humming. And you always come up with an idea. It's like one person talks and someone else talks, and then all of a sudden you have three people in the conversation, and four, and you're talking about the same topic, but it starts to expand and, and expand and grow. So that's basically how things, how a lot of tunes get developed.
You have the blues, which is secular, which gives you like a secular optimism in the face of some tragedy. And you have a, the religious conception, which gives you a sacred conception, which is, which is also uh, optimistic and uplifting. So that, well, that way, when you really deal with something that's tragic, I have a lot of music that's real, like low and tragic, and we marched with our feet were cut and we got beat. But when you have that blues in there, it just has an element of play in it. That means that you, it's survival music. It's designed to help you survive a tough condition. Forms of Afro-American church music are, are just forms of music, hymns, blues. Well, you're not that you don't you don't see like a, a, a them like sing a blues, but the Amen cadence in traditional church music is the basic progression of the blues. So by proxy, they're dealing with blueses, and also all the shouts and moans and cries. The sound that's in the church is the blues. I use like the tambourine. And the guys in the band grew up in the church. Earl and Riley grew up in the church. Veal grew up in the church. Eric Reed, the rhythm section. Wycliffe and Tremonis played in the church. Everybody is aware of the church sound, even if they didn't grow up in the church. Some people in their family grew up in the church. Uh, music was always, I guess you could, it was always the seasoning that went along with the, with the sacred food, so to speak. And in the Afro-American church, um, the musicians were just almost as important as the minister. <laughs> Uh, great musicians come out of the church, and you can always hear that sound in whatever type of music they're doing, especially the blues and jazz. You can always hear there's a certain type of expression, free expression that comes out, and it sounds like someone who's actually being reverent. So when, we, when you hear somebody playing, you say, that, oh, they, they sound like they're being very spiritual. <laughs> Feels is about slavery, American slavery, but it actually is about the. It, it's set in slavery, but it's also about today, who is like a. I don't know what the word for it is, but it's, it, it has a dual. It, it exists in two different times, and um, I was commissioned to do it at Lincoln Center last year in, I think April, April the first and the second we did it. And, and now we're getting ready to record it, so we've been rehearsing it, and it's long. That's the one thing I can tell you, it's very long. I'm from the South. I'm, I've, I've drawn most of my experiences Southern, and, and it comes from New Orleans. But also, I've lived in New York for 15 years. So, and, and also, the South that I'm from is the 20th, is the modern South. I'm not from like the plantation South. 
of course, vestiges of that still remain in the North and the South, or all over the world, actually. But um, I, I, I don't want to be, uh, I, I just try to remain true to my experience. Being from New Orleans, we have to write like that somewhat, and we have to play like that. So everything he hears is based on that. Uh, yeah, he's got, um, like, the traditional African styles, like, you know, before, you know, we were brought here. So he's got a lot of those kind of rhythms and things involved in there. Then he's got, it moves into the Negro spirituals, you know, which came next, I guess, and then a lot of blues, which followed that. And so he's kind of going through, you know, just the history of black people, in, you know, in general, not just jazz. And then it, it moves into swing and all that, so it's all in there. <laughs> Blood on the fields in particular is difficult. You know, I, I can't say that anyone on my instrument could just jump up there and do it. You know, you, you have to really uh, have some things together. You have to have your instrument together. Right. That's too loud. That's too loud. to write a story about a called Middle Passage to write a piece of music about being on a slave ship. So the whole music was just going to be about being on a slave ship. And then um, I was up at Albert Murray's house and he read a story to me by Stephen Vincent Benet and it was called uh, Freedom is a Hard Bought Thing. And uh, it was just kind of thinking about that story and having an idea for the slave ship. I put put the two of them together, and, and I ran through it, the, just the themes that I always try to, to, to deal with in, in all of my music, which is man and woman, uh, conception of democracy. like the light bulb or the airplane. One part of the marvelous uh, boom of 20th century invention that pushed humanity to a higher level. And jazz is that in sound. So it's, uh, it's the proposition. It's a musical portrait of democratic imperatives or democratic conceptions. And uh, in, I, don't, I, don't, I, don't only, I don't use black and white anywhere in here because I'm trying to deal with something human.
of life. And uh, there are always tragedies unfolding, unfolding around us, and we all are a part of them. I mean, you know, you did. Uh, pain is tied into perception. suffering throughout all the ages bears down on our age and we're always looking for something that's gonna help us make it through the day and the night with some style and that's what the early jazz music really has in it about to make me lose my that on top of all of that communicating, our intent is to feel better when we get finished talking. So we're not gonna be victimized by the angst of the 20th century, you know. We're not gonna be overwhelmed by whatever the tragedies are of what's going on around us. We're gonna recognize them and deal with them, but in the end, we're gonna feel good, we're gonna get us a poor boy sandwich, and we're gonna come back and deal with it again. With a, with a, with a, we're gonna come back reinvigorated. And uh, that's the feeling of New Orleans. Just say y'all. Give me both of the parts. Yeah. Let's play through this again. This is supposed to be beautiful, bro. It... Y'all ready? Let's go. Let's go for the top. <laughs> Let's try to play the man music, bro. One, two, <laughs> a one, two, three. One, two, a one, mm, mm. Some of us, we always see as destruction and death and desolation, you know, slavery and segregation and degradation. Other people see nothing but uplift, the abolition of slavery, the breakdown of segregation. Family, that's a part of all the musicians in New Orleans. Like we all, we all related a certain way. You know, we all know each other, we see each other, we love each other, we're trying to play the music, and we have our little strife and whatever we deal with, but uh, there's not that many, many musicians, you know. And in New Orleans, we know everybody, you studied with somebody or you grew up with them, and it's just a feeling that we have toward, toward each other. which we all have borrowed from. You know, the way that he voices chords and his approach to music, the way that he writes with counterpoint between the bass and the rest of the band. We had this just like everybody else's family, a lot of strife, a lot of turmoil, not, not enough money. Um, my mother and father trying to deal with their relationship. One of my brothers is autistic. We didn't sit around playing music. Like, I didn't come home and let's play some blues. It wasn't on that kind of vibe at all. You know, my mother and father were trying to deal with 
the fact that the world that they ended up living in was nothing like what they thought it was gonna be. Um, but we got along. His whole life he struggled. He was trying to play modern jazz in New Orleans. Nobody come to his gigs. Uh, more people come to see my brother and I play when we were 13 and 14 in high school playing in our funk band than would come to see my father play when he would play a jazz gig. When I was like, you know, respected Ellis Marcellus, when we were growing up, you know, he was always just scuffling, trying to get to the next gig, trying to feed all of those children. Uh, it was just a struggle for him. And I think that he went through a long period of depression, but you never would have known it because he's not, he never complains. He never blames anybody for anything. He's not the whiner. And like I said, his emotion is not in the front. But uh, the fact that he, all of this music that he loved and nobody liked it, I think that that, uh, that had an effect on him. He had excelled in European concert music and spent most, uh, just about all of his senior year in a symphony brass quintet doing concerts in the city. Uh, went to Tanglewood in the summer and Juilliard in the fall, you know. So uh, there was no real assurance that he was not going to pursue that. I mean, he had become a very good jazz player. I mean, for somebody his age. You know, he wasn't seasoned, but he was a good jazz player at a time when virtually nobody else was doing it, especially his peers. Even now, as a grown man, you know, if my father tells me something, it, it has a certain effect on me. But I was always with him on the gigs, and like we would drive back from New Orleans to Kenner, and he would be talking to me, and I never really knew what he was talking about. So I'd just be like, mm-hmm. But he'd be lonely, you know, just he wanted to just talk to somebody and get it out of him and just have some type of dialogue. So he figured, okay, I'll talk to him. The example of discipline, the example of it, you see, is something that a lot of us, we need to have so that if it's going to occur, it's something that we adapt to ourselves because we appreciate the rewards that we perceive at the end of the rainbow. Sometimes it doesn't come, but it's necessary uh, anyway if we are even gonna make a run at it, so to speak, or, or an attempt. I looked up to my father and uh, I, I think the seriousness that he approached playing a gig with is what uh, struck me, because if there would be five people in the club, he still was gonna play. I got from being in New Orleans was a, was a belief in the fantastic. It's my music lessons. Uh, my grandmother lived in New Orleans, all my family. So uh, I was always here. And, and, and I, for, for Mardi Gras, you, you, you mask, you know, you, put your, you can be what you want to be, basically. It's just the whole ambiance of the city is, is mysterious too. So, and when you grow up here, you feel it. You can't, you can't help it. You might not be able to put it in those terms when you, when you live here, but that's what it is.
is different from other cities in the world. Well, first, we have our own cuisine. And then all, we have people of all different nationalities, especially at that time, they were all living in New Orleans together and uh, in close proximity to each other because the neighborhoods were really integrated. And uh, when the musicians started to play jazz, the, the question was, how, how are we going to speak to each other and make up what we're going to say? You know, I've never seen someone with that type of mind where if you're playing an instrument, he can figure out how you play, you know, what, how you would sound best playing your own instrument. And he'll write the music and say, okay, play this. And you hear cats play, you say, man, that's great. I said, well, you know, went and wrote it out. <laughs> now I think that wind is going more toward, uh, not going back to the big band, but more toward the big band type of approach where it's more of a refinement. And you have these guys who really practice and they know their instruments, and then he can come along and you just, you know, get them all together and say, you know, this is what's happening. Just rehearsing uh, some Jelly Roll Martin's music, Dead Man Blues, Sidewalk Blues, some Monk's music, like Break Sake and Reflections, Thelonious, a lot of different Monk tunes, and some of my own music. It's like a, like a language. It's like you take, uh, like you have rules of grammar, you have vocabulary and words. And the blues is like that with musical notes. It gives the music life. In our music, we have things, d different devices like a riff. Riffs mean that we all agree on something. We're gonna play the same thing. We have a uh, call and response. Well, look, almost all music has that in it, but that just means that I speak and you, you tell me something. <laughs> that was the blues. <laughs> okay. yeah. We have solos. That means that each of us gets to express our point of view. We have polyphonic improvisation, which means that we get to talk at the same time, but try to negotiate our ideas rapidly as we go back and forth. stride piano players, uh, they just really, for the most part, incorporated most of the left hand uh, when they played, whether it was with, you know, a group or whether they were playing alone, uh, which is a lot of, which, which is something that, that piano players don't do today. Well, Jelly Roll Martin, um, first he was a Creole. The Creoles, they didn't want you to say that they were black, you know. And they, uh, they were French. And he, he uh, was a genius. He's the first great intellectual in jazz. And he, he codified the music and wrote it down. His music was very lively, and the way he played was a lot like who he was as a person. It had all of these 
all this variety in it, all of this color and all of this joy and zest for life. He was a complex man. He had a penchant for street life, you know. He, he had a, a great sense of humor, was a pool shark, an expert marksman, could shoot, could shoot pistols, a pimp, you know, late night, late night person. But he also had a, a, a real organized type of sensibility. He, he, didn't, he didn't allow that to overwhelm him. He was going to be the master of his destiny. from Jelly Roll Martin's music more than anything is a conception of form, how to put the pieces together, because he wrote in a, in a sectional form, but he integrated the rhythm section with the horns. Like, he understood the importance of when to bring the groove in, when to have the drummer play a straight type of four groove, when to let one or two instruments play, when to bring the polyphonic improvisation, and it's all in his way. It's all in, in the, a way that comes directly out of New Orleans music, out of that American experience. He's not trying to find a way of developing the form like, like Bach developed it or like Beethoven. He has a conception, which is a 20th century way, an American way. Like our road system is constructed in sections, but they all fit together. Or like a skyscraper is constructed, you know. F floors stack one on top of each other, but with something different on each floor. similar to Jelly Roll Morton in the uh, respect that he was also a very colorful character. Um, but we know first and foremost that he was a hell of a piano player and composer. Uh, when you listen to his compositions, you hear, you can hear Jelly Roll Morton singing through. I mean, at least I can. Monk play something like Worry Later. I mean, that composition itself, without being played even by Monk, it lends itself to having a certain type of joy and happiness in it, or something like Evidence. rhythmic variety, how it, you know, jumps around harmonically, how it jumps around just the feel of the notes. You know, he's got eighth notes and quarter notes and rests. The rests are just as much a part of the music as the notes are. Or something like, um... It's also got that humor that Jelly Roll Morton's music had. 
So they're very much alike in that respect. important part of all jazz, all different styles of jazz, from uh, early New Orleans jazz to uh, swing to bebop to uh, cool jazz and free jazz. Each innovator seems to have found another way to redefine or rework the blues to point the blues in another direction. If somebody is singing the blues, it's a dee dee da da, dee dee da, dee dee da da, dee. The thing to get that on your horn. See, that's a different thing. compositions the more they have two, two, a theme and then the solos and then the theme but with, with jelly roll it's just the use of the riffs and the breaks and the use of the material a certain way and a certain uh, belief in the theme like a simple theme and then the, how you're going to develop that theme and it's, it's still it's, it's just, just jazz music so we always are, are dealing every all of the jazz musicians are all related in some way because we you know we're doing the to, essentially, we have the same objectives. We went to represent the complete history of jazz, and, and I think that's very important because of the fact that when other musicians come into the music, they will possibly understand the importance of studying the complete history of the music as opposed to one particular era that took place in time. I think Winton uh, represents the highest values of jazz and, and of art. What he shows us is total dedication to music, and uh, in that, uh, he's a, is a shining example. Yeah. 
when you hear him play, you know, you can hear that in his music. It always has a, a sense of, well, it's gonna be all right. No matter how bad it gets, it's gonna be okay. You know, and I think that's the one thing that always comes out of his horn when he plays, because he plays blues on everything. 